everyone, uh, Red here, and welcome to another Artist Showcase. We I'm joined with Draco, and Hello. also joined with uh, John. Hello! And um, we're going to get into finding out, uh, asking some questions, and seeing what sort of artwork he does. Uh, Draco, please take it away. First question people would probably ask you is what kind of art would do you like to do in your spare time right now? Generally, I like doing the wood burned art. So I kind of like doing a lot. But I also do like handmade jewelry and everything. I don't have any pictures on my website. I do have a website, by the way, which will be of course probably down in the in the description, most likely. Right. Yep, I believe we're uh, recording that. I think. Right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah, so they can see what you do. And, mm -hmm. uh, wood burning and jewelry, anything else? That's about it. I will be eventually, hopefully, once I get the right resources, I will be looking at expanding into the fursuit making business. Doing, starting with the fursuit part. Like tails and hand paws and feet paws, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, uh, tails and foot paws are definitely a good place to start there. They're generally uh, fairly simple to make and Yeah, quit. they're... They're simple, and in case, in your case, the line was short fur, it's an also a uh, fantastic way to practice your shaving of the fur. Yeah, which I actually, I don't have it with me though, but I did a uh, tablet case. I got some fur from a place called Beverly's in California, and then I got some fur from them that's kind of like like a lion's fur, and I actually took a tablet that I had my old case in it. It's one of those little cheap ones you can get for like $15 from Walmart. I took the old backing off of it and I put the fur on top of it and did all that by hand. Pretty cool. And it was a pretty neat project. Sounds fun. <coughs> yeah, it was interesting. It was different. It hasn't been done before. And totally personal. Pers personal. Yes, personalized. Yeah. Thank you, personal to me. Yep. The very turn. Yeah. <laughs> I've noticed that um, a lot of the fur a lot of fur surgeries get or people who buy fur it's coming from california i've noticed uh there happens to be some lady who just got a box of fur from los angeles just the other day and shared it on google plus i happen to see it interesting, so interesting. I, buy, I, go buy fur, I usually try to keep it where it's done actually like at a local retailer like joanne's or hancock fabric it's like right for hobby, hobby, which is what we have here and right now, I will say this for anybody who is listening. Right now, Joanne's is right now like Joanne's is the best place to go for fabric right now, as they have it on some pretty good pricing. Because usually, first, pretty expensive. Right. Oh yeah. And if we're done with that question, the next one I have for you is who or what inspired you to be an artist in the first place. Thankfully on that one when I have a thank you. No one personally inspired me, but it's kinda like the way it looked as an appealing get time. It's kinda like overall I found it to be just a unique look. It was different, it was, you know, creative. You can always find something you have a little bit of that variety to it. So you never so you can never have the same thing twice. It's not like one of those mass produced kind of products. You might be unique with each piece, like jewelry. Or a fursuit for instance. You can always be unique and different. Have that little, your own little aspect of, you know, the effects. Something different, if you will. Yeah, they'd be, they'd be in your uh, own person kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, that, hmm, how did you first get, uh, how did you first end up getting into wood burning and be able to remake it? That I just kind of like said before, just kind of liked the way it looked. Figured it was, then I did a little research on it, figured it the way I read on it. It seemed to be like a fairly inexpensive hobby that you could that anybody could do without spending tons of money at first to run it. As I've seen at the tools themselves, just a little cheapo pins. You can get one at Harbor Freight for about $8. It's usually the cheapest that I've seen. But they can go anywhere from 8 bucks plus for the pins. But generally, your pins are going to be more of like I think the most expensive thing was like, oh, 15 or something like that. 
something like that, if I remember right. And then from there you start going into the pro ones, which go like 60 plus. And the pro ones you get, those are actually a different style. Whereas the basics, the pins, they're just little screw-on heads. So each one's inter interchangeable. So you can get those fairly inexpensively. Alright, and um, as for the professional ones, what makes them different? With those, the way the heads are, they're different. They're more of a wire head, instead of just a straight single piece head. See, so with those, you can have a little more personalization to the head. What? Yes, Stanley. Ignore. That happens every single showcase for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's scroll down here. Uh, what do you end up seeing yourself in the future doing with your art? Or what do you hope, or where do you hope to be in the future? Mm -hmm. I, I really couldn't say, but my main goal is really just to be successful, as well as, like I said before, expanding into other fields, adding other products, that kind of thing. So I can do some pretty complex items, but those usually take longer to make, of course. But like I said, I can even, I've even seen available, like, supplies-wise, you can get, like, I've seen, like, 50 bucks from Michaels. They have a walking chair you can get, a wood, completely unfinished wooden walking chair that you could do some wood stuff with and turn around and sell that for, like, 100 bucks. Or even 150 with that one. And those used to take a while because there's pers you can do the personalization more, some of the different effects to it to make it look nice. Because you have to take into new account, of course, the wood stain and the different things there. Oh, yeah, uh, I know what you mean, there's a place around here that kind of does that, they have like those, uh, wooden lawn chairs that just looks like a bunch of boards nailed to each other. That's that's self it, yeah. It's self-hurt. Those are actually, if you look on Instructables, actually, there's a tutorial for Embrite, so I'll tell you actually how to make those. I don't remember the link, but there is a tutorial out there that will tell you how actually how to make them. That's awesome. Actually do it again? Some, that may be something to think about in the future. You could end up making those with, like, custom wood burn packs to them. Yeah. Like, they're pretty good. You got them. Now, those would be more of a special request by them, though, if I did do those. Cause just because of the nature of them. And then, of course, shipping and everything. Because those can get pretty expensive. Or maybe one or two display ones, but generally those can get pretty expensive. Especially when you come down to paying, like, storage fees and that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. But it's all good. Mm -hmm. I know a few people in that kind of business. What do you find <clears throat> different in wood burning than making something like a piece of jewelry or something like that? But the, with the jewelry, you can all, you kind of run that risk to a degree of it breaking, like when you're making it. Whereas with the wood burn, same thing. But one of the nice things about it is you, you can come back and correct it before you actually do the official burning. Because with all your steps, and the first thing you have to do with it is actually trace it with carbon paper, your design first, onto the wood. So that's when you can come back and do it. So if you make a mistake on the wood, you can come back and erase it, come back with the carbon paper, fix it, then burn. So you get a little bit more of a, the better leeway zone. And same thing with the jewelry. It's, still, it's kind of an equal level on that. Oh yeah, I think one of the things we uh, were talking about with each other was stuff you could do with obsidian, but you were kind of scared because of how brittle it was. Yeah, obsidian is a good one, and I actually have a few different pieces of obsidian. I don't have it on me right now, but I've got a couple that I've done too. I have a couple of arrowheads that I've made like into like little, I'd say charm, like little necklace charms. That are real nice pieces. That I did the whole wire wrapping with, and those are pretty neat. If you're wood burning and stuff, uh, flint napping might be something to look into in the future as well. Yeah, I'll take into consideration and I will look into it. Yep, and the uh, final question I have before we just possibly ramble a little bit is, besides the fur suits, like, uh, any possible expansions, like... Like in the wood burning field uh, or what? Well, wood burning as well, but maybe stuff like... 
maybe going into like metal art or something like that. The metal art, I've looked into that, and generally that can get pretty expensive when it comes down to doing all the tools and everything. Along with having to have like at least like one or two certifications, such as a safety precaution. Just so you don't go cutting yourself, something like that. Make sure you know how to use the machines properly and the tools, that kind of thing. Because you want, because when you're doing them, you don't want to make them too sharp when you're cutting them, because they're gonna be done with the laser etcher or laser etching machine. And with those. Like I said, you also want to make sure you come back, round off the edges, and no one gets hurt, that kind of thing. Because you also, when you go to sell it, you run that risk of somebody getting hurt, something like that. So there are some things here and there that to be taken into account, too. Just because of safety. Yep, and it seems like stuff with that nowadays, everyone thinks sandpaper is a go-to thing for anything. Hmm, well, it's good for some stuff, but not everything. Huh? But uh, it's too where you have like things like Sculpey and all that, which that I last when I last saw it at like Home Depot was like eight bucks that thing. And I paid like mine, I paid like fifteen or something like that, and I got an Ace Hardware store, a local one. What a piece of the same paper? No, it was the Sculpey. It's a famous product. You can like shape it, mold it, and when you let it dry like overnight, it's supposed to turn into like rubber. Oh yeah, I've seen stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. Pretty neat product. Yeah, silly but uh, Now to go back on the previous thing, yeah, uh, you did cover jewelry, you did say obsidian, but is there anything in particular that you actually like to work on, like a certain stone or maybe design? I'm not I do a lot with like a lot of like, I do a lot with like a Christian theme. As a lot of my work is usually I usually try to keep it fairly Christian because of my faith and all. But I do because I can do also wholesale work. But usually it does take longer because the number that has to be done for that. Because I do sell to a local camp here. I did my I like when they're selling like jewelry and everything for it. I do something I like doing a lot is the bracelets and the in the earrings as those are pretty simple to make. I can do other items like bookmarks and that kind of thing too. And they also offer a product that you can also find in of trading. They're these snap bracelets. And they're like these interchangeable little button things that you can interchange out. So it's kind of like a charm bracelet, but with more of like a snap on thing. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember those. Those are always fun as a kid, just trying to snap them at, or snap them on the family. Yeah, they're pretty neat little products. And those, I remember, you can find those, just kind of a little spoiler on them. Also, trading is the seller of those. Oh, alright. And they're, they, they bought some from them, they're pretty good. I saw them, I do those, I sell them for about like five bucks a piece, usually. That's good for a snap bracelet. Yeah, and you can make it yourself, do all the personalization you want to it. Whatever you want done with it, you can do it. Do it. It's only cost you five bucks for three, three pins, and then every additional one's twenty-five cents. Oh uh, yeah, so that's a good way to expand as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I do that. And of course, I often like when I go to like the festivals and things. I try to have like some other novelty stuff too, just kind of that variety of stuff to kind of be open to all rel all levels and everything. Got kind of something for everybody that would appeal to to everyone. Right, and uh, I know a lot of people, a lot of artists, some say that once they have their good for, or their first good piece of art, that's usually their favorite, but is there any that you can, is there any uh, thing you work on that you can, that you'll possibly remember for a very long time? Uh, I, I do have a lot of, a couple different like Hawaiian ones, like especially my first one I did. If I go to my, I can send you all the link again if I need to, but I have on my Google Drive. I'm interesting, I have a image of a couple of different little wood burn deals that they did, and that's my first ones I ever did. It's, uh, not really, it's three different ones that have like a bunch of like lines on the side of it and all that. There's like a fish with like the word Jesus in it, and there's like a lion, and then I can't remember the other one. But there was a couple deals in that. Is that the one? Uh, yeah, we're gonna, uh, I 
like your, uh, the lion one, is that the one that's kind of like your mascot on your website? You can call it that. I've got a logo in the work. I'm still waiting on the uh, artist rubber to kind of finish it all up. you doing a little bit like the shading, finalizing stuff. Better than that, like I said, I've got something I've won yet. Because my previous one I had on there originally, I did a little looking. There's another site out there, a photography group called One Land Photography, and they had the same logo, but it was filled in. So I had to get a whole different one to try to kind of keep to the copyright stuff. Yeah, a lot of people are very fickle with that kind of stuff. Yeah, this was just a free pick I found there from the Wix, like free pick system that they had. And I was just kind of using it kind of like a placeholder. Oh yeah, I can see what you're perfectly mean. Uh, well, I know you do the art trades. Is there anything else? Uh, we'll probably I show that. Request, the request. I like I said, those I'll shout out every now and then. But those are kind of like when I'm just kind of wanting something to do or to kind of work on getting better at it. I'll do the request here and there. Right, and uh, as for the art trades, we, uh, we'll probably show that one you did. We have permission to from that uh, one person of yours. Yeah, games in market. Actually, have the original in here. Don't want to see it. I think I'm fine. I think they have the original pick. Uh, here it is. This is the original one that I did. If I can see that. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Okay. Hmm. Uh, sadly, no, we can't. I don't think we can screen share with the mobile. Okay. We'll throw it in at the uh, somewhere in the video, though. Okay, y'all can see my screen. Can't y'all can see me? Can't you? Uh. No, your Skype might be out of date. My what now? Skype might need an update. Why well, I did just the other day? Uh, but I'm not sure. Skype is Skype at times. Yeah. Uh, I'm running the current edition of iOS. Uh, anything else you want to add, Red? Um. Because I have a few things I'm thinking about. Y yeah, you have a YouTube channel. Have ever considered, yeah. ever considered, um, maybe te making teaching videos on how to do certain things? I have, yeah. It's just kind of like resource there. Like video editing wise, I'm not really that good at it. I kind of like struggle with it. I can do it, but I'm not like thinking, like the best at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also um talked about that too um, while you're working on your project. Hmm. Dreaming those. Cause I did that, I think I saw on the website there, but I did have that one picture that I did that was just kind of a speed deal, I want to say a speed thing, but a time lapse that I did of the Superman logo. Which I have as well. Yep, that's on your website as well. And uh, we were talking about that the other, or just last night as well, is I can discuss it in greater detail now is you said one of the things is all you have for pretty much right now is like a selfie stick, right? Pretty much, yeah. Uh do you have a do you have like a random piece of leather or maybe a pair of pants that you don't wear anymore? I probably do, yeah. And like I said, if you work with wood you probably have a vice grip as well, don't you? I have something, one that picked up like eight bucks at a jewelry shop. Uh, one thing you, could, uh, but one thing you could do is you can move like a stand over with the uh, vice grip on it. So you've got just a little photo stand too. And you kind of put like art, like you display art on, something like that. Yeah, but what you can do is with the vice grip is you can put like leather or denim around the selfie, selfie stick and just tighten up the vice grip just enough to hold it in place. Mm-hmm. Which may not sound that great for people watching, but sometimes hmm. the most sometimes the most unorthodox sounding things work the best. True. They get the job done. They get the job done. 
Yep, whatever it works. Pretty much. Anything else, Rick? No, I don't think so. <laughs> okay, because I'm here as long as Jamie. Anything else, Draco, that you could think of that you'd wish to ask? Why don't we have him available? Maybe a future, uh, future project. Give me the question again, please. Uh, maybe some future projects you're working on or something, stuff you're working on now you enjoy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know kind of stuff I'm doing. I know two have been looking at just some Christmas images for the Christmas line. Yeah, that'll be a big point. Yeah, I try to keep, like, a variety every year. I'll have so something I'm working at, working at, like, with some of my wildlife ones that I have. I'm going to try to do something of a, uh, where so much of that sale will go automatically to charity. Just trying to help with wildlife conservation and that kind of thing. Oh, it's actually amazing to hear you don't hear many artists doing that. Far it, just, it's a good business move and two to me I think for some people it'd be good to kinda of get that awareness going. You know? Give people yeah. at least just some consideration to wildlife as it does have an equal importance. Because to a degree we're the ones who are technically invaded on their land. To some extent. Um uh, well yeah, kinda went a little overboard, but that's a that's a debate for another topic. Okay. Uh, I guess the only other thing I can think about is going back to the jewelry at your uh, prize point, but uh, stuff you're going to be working on for the holiday season and what people expect to find, like what kinds of stones are you going to be putting into your jewelry coming up? Uh, drawer, like, stone wise, those are kind of limited. I kind of like work with what stones that you have available and like can get fairly inexpensively. I do a lot of the beaded stones. So a lot of my supplies that you usually get from like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, that kind of thing. Just because they're local stores I can go to and they're reliable. And what kind of stones would those be? Yeah, they have a variety of different ones there that they offer. It's kind of hard to really kind of say which one specifically. Because they have a whole variety of them. Right. That is a fairly good selection. Especially when it comes to like clearance products and such. Hmm. Oh, actually, you mentioned that store made me realize there's... I forgot to ask this. They're in the thing when you mentioned them before is... Mm -hmm mentioning any of the other businesses that you help support in your local area that others near you or well not to reveal your location but maybe some that know this that watch this video know the would know the businesses that you mentioned yeah it's generally like i know hobby lobby the texas company as well as michael's they're both texas brands That's for me, like in my local area, mostly non-profit wise, I do I do a lot of my church and everything, I am, like, I do a lot of video stuff with them, doing just mostly recording kind of stuff, running cameras, running lighting, that kind of thing. And the camp here, where I live at, maybe, I do with them every summer, I usually am like support staff, and I'll work doing lake work, or working in the dining hall, or whatever they need me to do. So I'm probably going to get your backup for like backup. So I work in any field I need to be in. So, they, so if it may be working the gift shop, I work in the gift shop, maybe working the dining hall serving, or running a drink line, or doing the salad bar, I get it done. And usually when I'm doing the salad bar, I keep it pretty clean. Oh, that's good. Mm-hmm. Because generally most guests have a tendency to mess it up big time. It's kind of like how it is in some retail places. But they actually have worked retail. Ross, dress for less. In the west, or what's the west? Uh, I don't think the region. Over at Montgomery Village in Santa Rosa, California. No, yeah, even in Wisconsin, with what little we have here, I've seen some stores get destroyed by careless tourism. 
Yeah. Yeah, well, Archer is, is a good star, but because I do tend not to show much respect to it. Because every time, it's always destroyed. They don't ever put anything back. They don't ever keep it at least framed up. They always make the, the employees' lives miserable to an extent. Even when they, like, even when Ross came on the West's product, it's very annoying. Because there's some stuff that can, all it needs is maybe a new set of batteries, and it works. Or say, like, like we've gotten some, like, like stuff toys, all they need is a little bit of sewing, it would have been good to go, resellable. And yet they toss them, that or they could have donated them. I guess some of them they'll just toss them instead of donating them. I have they still have some use to them. Sorry. I've dealt with people like that before, like every auto parts person that picks up the phone. Mm -hmm. I remember one year, uh, my Jeep was having a bad battery, and the person behind the phone was so... I'm not going to say stupid, but he was so ill-informed about automotive stuff. He tried to... He tried to sell me on the, um, me on the idea that there was a specific battery made for a 91 Cherokee. When you any car battery usually works? Yeah, any top... Any top uh, connection battery would work yeah. fine as long as it fits in the slot. Yeah, because that's my thing. When I was working at Ross, I was pretty educated. Like, I knew a lot about the different products that we sold. Even because I also worked like their accessory section, I was pretty smart about what we had. Because I guess my, I could easily spot you a bad product in a heartbeat. Something you'd always get in, or these rabbit TV devices. I don't know if you've seen the ads for those. Like, there's a little $20 little TV stick, you plug it in, you put together like all these channels and everything. Oh yeah, I know those. Yeah, we keep the we always have those in like all the time, and they don't sell because they're not because they're not worth anything. I even bought one once to see how good it was. Like they were selling for like three dollars, but I bought one to see really how good they were. All it was was just a thing that takes you a bunch of links to other sites. That's all it does. Not even worth the money for the twenty dollars that you paid for it. Oh no. So those I would not recommend buying at all. I found them just. No, and those them. are going. Those are going out of business too because a lot of uh, a lot of websites based off of networks are have actually full episodes of TV shows nowadays. Yeah, because I know I use the Hulu and Netflix a lot. But I also have one site that I recommend if you want some old classic shows like The Flintstones or Scooby Doo or something like that. It's funnier moments. They now switch the domain name to Tune.is and they're pretty good. And they've got, like, a lot of the old classics, like the Flintstones and all that. And those you can't find anymore. It's hard to network but playing them. Uh, there's one network I can, th I can remember, but I, I, did, I have never... It's so rare that I get to check out Satellite TV that I don't remember what it's called. Yeah. Now, out here in the little canyon, that's practically your only option for TV service. Either that, or you stream it off the internet. And there's a lot of sites to do that. Pretty much. I know one site, you can even watch movies that are in theater before they even come out. Like, I don't know if you all remember that one film Annie came uh, out. Uh, I watched it before it even came out in theaters. And it was a pre-release. Pre-screen release. I know exactly what website you're talking about, but I'm not going to say it. Well, it was a good site. I will say that one. You can find all kinds of movies there. Alright, well, I believe I got a notification that, uh, about time to wrap up. Okay. Any last things you'd like to say, uh, before you say your goodbyes? Honestly, everyone, just stay positive and always be true to yourselves. Alright, Greg, you want to take out for the intro? Um, yeah. Um, if you guys, if any other artist is interested, please uh, let us know in the comment section below or comment when we post this video. Um, other than that, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And everybody have a good day, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy.